So you've decided you want to become an ethical hacker, but you're wondering how much programming is involved or is there any at all? We're going to discuss that starting right now. So one of the questions I get all the time is, okay, I want to get into cybersecurity. I definitely am interested in ethical hacking, but I'm worried about whether or not I need to know any kind of programming. Should I do that? Should I learn a programming language? If so, which one should I learn? There's a lot of questions that surround this idea. And I always start off by saying, you don't need to know programming, but man, does it help. It's a very big help for anybody that wants to be in that cybersecurity space, because you're gonna understand technology a whole lot more. And you can use those programming skills to help build out new toolkits and scripts that can help you automate things that you're working through in your ethical hacking life now that you've become one. So what does that look like? Well, that's what this video is all about. How can I take those skills to uh, apply some sort of automation to when I'm working through uh, a pen test or ethical hacking engagement. I'll just take a look and see what that is gonna look like. So here on my machine, I have a login form, right? And this is the OWASP Juice Shop program, which you can go download, it's in GitHub, and you can get it up and running. I got it running on a separate server, and I'm accessing it through my lovely Firefox web browser, and it's got this wonderful login area, right? No big deal. But what, what can I do? How can I hack this login? That's the idea. Well, I can try just brute forcing. Okay, admin, admin, and uh, okay, well, it gives me in, invalid email or password. Mm, that's, that's not untypical to what that's going on. Now, what you don't see is I'm also proxying all these web requests. When I put in email and password, that gets pushed into a web proxy, which captures that information so that I can look at it or even modify it before it gets sent along to the actual server to process that request. And we can take a look at that here. You can see I just have it minimized. And here are, are those requests that I made to the server. The one that I'm really interested in is right here. It says post, and right? it's a post request. And we can see that that information shows up down here in the request tab. Pretty simple. I got a lot of information that I'm going to need to programmatically attack this web form. I want to brute force my way through it. Maybe I want to try some SQL injections. Maybe I have a list of really good SQL injections, but I don't want to take the time to try them one by one because that manually is not fun, right? Automation is the key. Now, Burp does have a built-in functionality for doing that, but the community version, the free edition of Burp Suite is kind of throttled in that vein. Well, what if I built my own tool? What if I broke out of that box, I could speed up the process, and now I got a tool that I can build on and it works in a way that I like it to work instead of having to be controlled by birth. Not that there's anything wrong with that product, but it allows me a little more freedom. All right, what does that look like? Let's jump over here to my terminal, and here I have two programs that I've created to perform this work for us. So let's cat intruder. We'll start with a, this is a simple bash script. If you're running Linux like Kali, as you probably will be if you are in ethical hacking, then uh, you have a bash terminal. I can click that. I think they actually have upgraded to Z shell, but bash is not uncommon to find. And because I know how this works, I know how to, I understand the programming or scripting language that is bash and what its functionality can do. I'm able to automate the things that I want to work on. Let me open this up in a, in a text or a, a, a text editor. So make this a little easier. I got one here called mouse pad. And this was called Intruder. This gives me all sorts of great colorizations and things of that nature. Helps my eye process the, the work a little bit better. Now, I've heavily commented this so we understand each one of these things that are happening. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying I want a variable, and I want to call it, and it's going to pull from a file. This, this uh, is called fuzz. And I'm going to say from root documents, burp suite sql i dot fuzz. I, I want to grab that information. I can see what's in that by just catting that file. I don't, uh, oh, I've got this going on here. All right, well, we'll, we'll work around you. We'll split around. And then I'll do a little bit of that, make it to where you guys can see this. And if I cat slash root slash documents, so uh, what is it? Uh, burp, sweet, SQL, small, fuzz. There we go. You can see I've got a bunch of SQL injection statements just in a flat text file. Easy peasy, right? Go back to our program, see what it does. And now I start a loop. So I want to loop through uh, the SQL I file line by line. I want to take each one of those pieces of information and I want the program to try each one of them one at a time for me and then ultimately alert me if anything seems to have worked. How do we know that? We'll get into that logic just in a second. 
So I say, I'm gonna use curl. So basically I'm creating a loop. So start with this one. And while you're doing this, you know, this is a while loop. It's not a, a if loop. You, you should learn about those, those foundational programming functions and, and logics that there are used. And then you can apply those to just whatever syntax you're going to. So when you ask the question, what's the best language to learn? Well, it could be any language as long as it's working for you and it seems to give you all the functionality that you're looking for. Syntax comes after that. All right, so once we have that, I can say I wanna put all those results, which is going to be run this curl statement. And I'm gonna put in things like what line I'm on. So feed in that, that first iteration that I'm reading from that file. Drop that in. Here's my password. I don't care what password I'm putting in because I'm trying um, SQL injection. And then what I had to do was, you can see I kind of put that stuff down here. Curl's output was a little, a little wordy. So I thought maybe I can use something a little easier like the response code, the HTTP response code that comes back whether or not the action was successful. I was getting uh, an error on trying to put just wrong information, but when I have right information, it actually directs me to another page, giving me a 200. So I'm just gonna look for 200s, and that's why I had this part right here, just say, hey, I just want that status code. If I get that status code, and that's where we move down here, if I get that status code, a result is 200, then I can echo out possible match, great, and I can then try that as a mechanism for logging in to the system. All right, so now that we've seen this, and then uh, I won't leave this out here, right down here at the bottom, you notice I've got this redirector, that's this, uh, what is it, the less than character, that's redirecting whatever's coming from this right here, so it's that, that line, that's where it's getting its information from, it's kind of pushing it in to my loop. Now, you think, oh man, that's crazy stuff, because you know, you're new to programming, it seems amazing, or in insanely hard, it's really not that difficult, these are foundational skills, that we teach here at IT Pro TV. So you could pick up that pretty easily to incorporate into your programming world as you learn it. Okay, so let's see what this does. I'll close this file. I can exit out of here. And now let's just go ahead and run it. And to do that, just do a dot slash and it's called intruder. I fire it away. Oh, I've already got a possible match. I've even got another possible match. And from here, I can just grab that output, copy it jump back over here, grab my web browser, and in the email area, I'll pop that in there, paste, and then log in. Oh, look, I was able to successfully log in. I didn't get the error, it was all good. And you can see by the account as I'm logged in as the admin. So very cool, I was able to leverage SQL injection through automation instead of having to do it one at a time or relying on burps throttled functionality I was able to build my own tool quite easily and hack into this login web form. I, was, I just also wanted to show you, I was able to do it in Python as well, as my virtual machine's trying to get in my way. I was able to do it in Python as well, that was what the other script was. And just see the differences and the, and the similarities between the two. I'm gonna do mouse pad, pi dash intruder. And it seems like it's a lot more code because the lines tell you that it's a lot more code, but it's really not that much. I think ultimately without the comments, the amount of code that was that it took to create both of these functions were right around 20 lines or so, 20, 25 lines. The great thing about using Python though became more portable. I didn't need to rely on curl. I just had to hopefully think that me, if I've got Python installed, that's all I need. I can just move this script from any machine to any machine, any system to any system. As long as I had Python, it would run this and I'd be good to go. So I increased portability. Not only that, but now I can start to refactor. I can start to add functionality, make it work more effectively, more efficiently, make it more portable, make it work across different types of systems instead of this, this one use case. So there's a lot of really good skills that you learn and you pick up as you learn more about programming. You understand how systems work at a better level so that you're more effective at breaking into them and breaking them in a way that's gonna help you understand where their weaknesses lie, exploit those weaknesses, and then help people fix those weaknesses because now you understand what's going on. So if you were wondering about programming and does it affect a hacker, does, do they need to know that? Will you make up your mind? I would say no, but man, it sure does help. 
Hopefully that helps you out when it comes to making that decision on whether or not you're going to learn a programming